Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another card video at my YouTube channel and blog. Today's video is all about minimal supplies and creating a simple Mother's Day card. I'm going to walk you through some of the supplies before I get started. I'm using a very simple praying watercolor set today. It does come with this brush, which is a size 6 brush, but I won't use it for the actual painting. I'll use it when I mix my colors, but for the painting, I'm going to switch to this number 2 round brush. This is a very inexpensive brush from Royal and Langnickel. All of the supplies I use today, as minimal as they are, will be listed down below in the video description and in the supply section at my blog with links to online stores. You'll need a pencil and an eraser. The pencil and eraser I'm using today are linked down below, like I said. And then you'll need a white gel pen. You don't have to have a white gel pen. You could definitely swap it out for a black pen if needed. You'll need some scissors and then some watercolor paper. And the watercolor paper I'm using today is from Canson. This is Canson XL watercolor paper. It's a very inexpensive watercolor paper, but still good quality. So that's the one I really recommend for these minimal supply videos. I also have a free download at my blog. You can download this template and it's just a super fast and easy um, kind of guide for how you can get this design on your card. So I'm going to walk you through how you can transfer this design onto your watercolor paper in a super easy way. So you're going to trim out this design and then before you do anything else you're probably going to need to uh, fold down your watercolor paper. So go ahead and fold that in half. The finished card size is four and a quarter by five and a half, and that watercolor paper was nine by 12, so I just cut it down. And then I'm taking that template that I've cut out, and I'm taking my pencil and scribbling on the back of it. I've just put a piece of white paper down so that I can see through that uh, paper and I can see where that heart design is. I want a nice layer of pencil. I'm then going to take my design and I'll put it uh, back the way it's supposed to be face up on top of my card base and I'm going to hold it in place with a couple pieces of tape. You will need some painter's tape for this card. Um, in general when I teach watercoloring I do recommend that you use some painter's tape or some masking tape to hold your project in place while it dries. So you probably need this for watercolor projects anyway. So now I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to trace over the printed lines of this design. And what's happening underneath is that all of, all of that scribbling that we did on the back of the paper is being transferred. It's transferring the graphite to the watercolor paper, but only where I press down with my pencil. So this is a really great way to transfer that design onto watercolor paper. I use this a lot for whenever I've sketched out an idea and then I want to make sure that, that it is exactly how I've sketched it but on another piece of paper. I'm going to peel up this tape here so you can see the design underneath. And it's like Christmas morning when you reveal it. There we go, so there's all that pencil. The lights over my work service are pretty bright, so it's a little blown out, but you guys get the idea. So I'm going to take my pencil, or, or excuse me, my eraser, and erase some of that graphite that transferred in areas where I don't need it. I'm then going to tape down my project to a hard surface. I really re recommend uh, taping it down to something that you can pick up and move around, but you definitely don't have to. You can just tape it down to a tabletop or to even to a book. We're not going to be painting off the edge today, so you would be perfectly safe to tape this to a book. So I'm going to prep all of my colors before I start painting. And I thought I'd walk you through this color mixing process just in case you need a little bit of help coming up with your own color palette. So I have yellow and red that I've diluted quite a bit with lots of water. And then I wanted a coral shade, so I'm mixing red and orange and also watering it down a little bit till I have a nice coral shade that I like. I then took purple and mixed in some more red with that to create a red violet shade. And then I'm going to do a straight purple color, but just dilute it down a little bit so that it isn't quite as uh, intense. For the green, I wasn't in love with the green that's in this palette, in this watercolor set, so I mixed it with yellow. And then to tone it back just a tiny bit, I put a drop of red in it. Red is the complementary color to green, which means that when they're mixed together, they create brown. So by only adding a tiny bit of red, it tones down that very bright yellow-green shade. For the beginning of this painting, I started by painting the banner a very light 
uh, pale pink. That was, that's the first color I mixed on my uh, in my watercolor set. I will eventually add another color on top of this to intensify it, but if you want to keep it this pale pink, you definitely could. I'm now going to paint around and uh, paint all the different flower petals except the large daisies. I'm going to leave the petals on the daisies white, so I'm not going to paint them at all. I'm going to let that white of my watercolor paper show through. So I'm dropping all these in. And after I have each of these painted, I do want to make sure that I dry this watercolor paper completely before I move on. Now you're going to see on camera that I have a heat tool that speeds up the drying process, but you definitely don't need a heat tool. You can let this air dry, just let it sit, and it will dry fairly quickly. Um, using a heat tool just speeds up the drying process. You definitely don't need it for any special effects or anything like that. At this point, uh, I decided that I would go ahead and paint those daisies, put the yellows right in the centers of the flowers, and then I'm gonna hit this with my heat tool again. So this is at that point when you would let it dry completely. So I'm also going to intensify the color of that banner. Like I said before, I, I thought I wanted it to be pink, but then I realized that I was going to be using a white gel pen over the top of this banner to write my greeting. And so I wanted it to be a darker shade so that that white jelly roll pen would show up. So now I'm gonna come in with that very, very pale pink again, and I'm going to fill in the gaps around these flowers. By going around the daisy petals, which I've kept blank or kept white. By going around in pink, it's going to basically paint the petals of the daisy. I think this is a really fun way to have some white daisies on something and not have to necessarily shade in the petals of the daisy. So I'm going around all of these areas um, fairly easily. I'm just using a little bit of paint on my paintbrush here and trying to get a very flat color. As I go around, I'm making sure to not overlap what I would have already painted. I want to preserve the colors that I already have that are on my watercolor painting. So today's card is a Mother's Day card, but you could definitely change the greeting that's on this banner to whatever you'd like. You could change the, the different sentiments. It would be a great thank you card or a thinking of you card as well. So I'm gonna mix up just a tiny bit of gray and I'm gonna put that right underneath that banner. And I did that gray just with a really diluted black. So I'm letting that dry or speeding it up with my heat tool. And then I came in with my eraser. And this is going to erase all of those pencil lines that are not trapped by the watercolor. So most of the pencil lines are going to come away, but everything that's left behind will just intensify the edges of those different colors. In order to add the greeting over this banner, I used that white jelly roll pen that I referenced earlier, and I'm writing Happy Mother's Day in a very narrow and very condensed style of type, or hand lettering. So if you like cards like this, I want to let you guys know that I have an online class called Simply Watercolor that is generally the same thing, where I'm walking you through how to create cards from scratch without any special supplies mostly just a pencil and some watercolors. So if you want to check out that card class down below, it's there's a link and you can sign up. The class is still online and you can take it today. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I'll be back next week with even more card videos. Thanks for watching.